Hi, I'm Jeff Klein, editor of Radiographics, and today I'm pleased to have with us Dr. David Bates, currently from the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City, New York, who is the author of one of our featured papers in the current January 2018 issue of Radiographics. Dr. Bates' paper is entitled Imaging Manifestations of America's Opioid Epidemic for the Emergency Radiologist. Dr. Bates, welcome to this podcast. Thank you. So, David, your paper, which is based on an education exhibit that was presented at the RSNA 2016 annual meeting, addresses an important topic that's received a tremendous amount of press in the past one to two years as the United States deals with an opioid epidemic that is impacting many of our communities. However, I'm not sure that most healthcare professionals consider radiology to have much of a role in addressing this issue. How did you and your colleagues from Boston come up about creating the exhibit that led to this paper? It's a good question. Um, you know, as you mentioned, and as we all know, um, there's a huge nationwide opioid epidemic uh, that's a real problem. Massachusetts is especially uh, hard hit compared to some other states. Um, in 2014, the opioid uh, death rate in Massachusetts uh, was more than double the na national average. Um, and between 2013 and 2016, um, the EMS uh, records from the EMS data showed that we went from about 8,000 uh, opioid-related EMS uh, encounters to about 21,000. So uh, EMS, the emergency medical services, are encountering a lot of these patients um, and it's just really booming. So in the emergency room at Boston University Medical Center, we see this every day, um, multiple times a day. So we, we were getting very comfortable with a lot of these findings um, and wanted to share some of our experiences with other uh, folks who may not see it as frequently, but still uh, are encountering it more commonly in the emergency room. Great, well, thank you for that. Uh, David, your paper begins with some of the background information that regards opioid addiction, which is important for all of us to understand, even radiologists. You then go into a multi-system review of the imaging manifestations of opioid use and abuse. Let's begin with the neuroradiological manifestations that are seen in some of these patients. Can you describe some of the CNS manifestations that you see in this population? And we'll look at figure three, which demonstrates a couple of the cerebral complications that can be seen in patients with intravenous drug abuse? Sure. Um, so in figure three, um, we see a patient, uh, a young patient who had developed uh, endocarditis. Um, and the first images show essentially multifocal areas of infarct. These are diffusion images you see in the uh, right occipital lobe. Um, in the left frontal lobe, there's a few spots of uh, infarcts from uh, septic emboli. And then uh, Subsequently, we see on the CT angiogram that there's a focal um, aneurysm of one of the left MCA branch arteries. Um, so this is uh, presumed to be a mycotic aneurysm, um, which arises when bacteria get into the vessel wall um, and sort of weaken the vessel wall. Um, and then the last image shows a resolution on a follow-up study of that aneurysm this patient was managed with just antibiotics, um, which they can be sometimes for, for these small intracranial mycotic aneurysms. Um, once they get a little larger, they, they can't always. Um, the adventitia is weakened in these because of the bacteria uh, infection as well, so they're a little bit more prone to rupture. Um, and when they do rupture, the mortality is high, around 80%. Um, so this is just a couple of the examples of what we saw. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, David, heroin leukoencephalopathy is a condition uh, seen in opioid abuse that has relatively characteristic imaging findings. Can you discuss the MR imaging findings in this condition? And we'll highlight figure four, which I think nicely illustrates this condition. Sure. Um, so heroin leukoencephalopathy um, is a little bit unique um, in that it's uh, a metabolic condition seen in heroin users. It has sort of this colorful acronym of chasing the dragon, um, which came from uh, when people used to um, cook the heroin and um, inhale the smoke through a straw. Um, and so what we see here uh, in this case, and in many cases, is you get restricted diffusion, uh, an increased flare signal, um, and the deep white matter tracks. Um, it can also involve, you know, sort of plus or minus the basal ganglia um, in other areas, but the, the mechanism is not totally well understood. 
um, it may be due to you know apoptosis of the oligodendrocytes um, or some microvascular dysregulation. Um, and one important thing to, to think about with this is if you see a patient with these symmetric restricted diffusion in the deep white matter, as we see here in, in 4A, um, sometimes the imaging features can get worse if you follow them up, even if they're getting better. So uh, worsening of the imaging findings is not necessarily indicative that the patient's condition is, is getting worse, even if they're clinically improving sometimes the follow-up images look like it's progression of the initial insult. Great. That's important to keep in mind. So we'll move on to the cardiovascular system and chest. Um, infective endocarditis and septic pulmonary emboli are uh, obviously two of the more well-recognized complications of intravenous drug usage. Can we review figure six, uh, which describes the findings that are detailed uh, in, in such a case uh, and important for the radiologist who's interpreting the chest CT studies needs to be aware of. And then we'll look at figure eight as well, which shows an uncommon but I think important complication, which is that of a pulmonary artery mycotic aneurysm. Absolutely. Um, so f figure six, we, we see a pretty uncommon finding. This is a routine CT uh, from the emergency room. This is not a gated cardiac MR. And there's a pretty substantial vegetation um, on, the, on the valve there. Um, and so th this isn't something that you should rely on your routine CTs for, but just have in your mind, uh, you know, what it would look like if you do see it. Um, you know, the, the real modality for, for diagnosing endocarditis is uh, echocardiography. Um, tra transthoracic is a little bit less sensitive uh, than endosophageal, um, but they're both uh, quite specific, above 90%. Um, and so in figure six, we just get a glimpse of a patient who has a particularly large vegetation, um, and, then, uh, and then we can have it in our mind what it, what it looks like. And then in figure eight, uh, this is a complication, of course, of um, endocarditis with septic emboli. We see this patient uh, was fairly sick, and she had a dilatation of the pulmonary artery there on the left. And when you went for a, a CT, or for a conventional angiogram, excuse me, you see that corresponding dilatation of the artery, which was successfully coiled. Um, these can be treated either uh, with your interventional radiologist or uh, an open surgical approach. Um, probably depends on your local expertise and sort of what's available and also the clinical setting, but um, these also have a very high mortality with rupture, just like the intracranial mycotic aneurysms. That's great. I think that's an important point you raise, in particular about the right heart findings. We tend not to focus so much on intracardiac uh, anatomy when we're not doing a study specifically that might be done uh, for an indication or cardiac indication or maybe gated. So I think you know, paying attention to the cardiac structures, you know, we can on occasion pick up some of these vegetation without even right or left side. And I think it's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, next, the paper, you review some of the musculoskeletal manifestations, which I think are fairly straightforward, but yeah. let's briefly discuss some of the abdominal manifestations. Um, the intracorporeal concealment of drugs is something that you know, most of us are not primed to look for when reviewing imaging studies on these patients, even if we're aware of the particular clinical history. Can we discuss the things to look for? And then we'll review figure 14, which I think illustrates one of the maybe unexpected findings that are highlighted in your paper. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so, you know, intracorporeal concealment of drugs is um, not that common. Um, but it's, it's common enough that it will probably come through um, some emergency departments near you at some point, uh, wherever you are or wherever you practice. Um, and there's no one specific finding that will tip you off, um, but the thing to look for is multiple foreign bodies or atypical structures within the GI tract, the rectum or the vagina. Um, I've seen uh, body packing in all three locations. Um, and it may be sort of an unclear history. Um, the cases I've seen, uh, a couple of them have been motor vehicle accidents. Um, one was someone who fled the scene of a motor vehicle and then came to the ER a day later and um, had these drugs. So um, you see here in figure A and B, um, basically these uh, foreign bodies in the stomach. And then in C, um, this is the retrieved packets of heroin that were found on endoscopy. Um, and the, the main risk for these patients uh, is that these can rupture. So 
once they do rupture, um, the, the carrier is exposed to very high levels of opiate or whatever else they're, they're concealing, um, and that can be life-threatening. So just something to keep in mind um, as uh, you know, the opioid crisis plays out. This is something that does come up. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you. Now let's look at an interesting uh, abdominal vascular complication uh, of IV drug use, and that's uh, illustrated in Figure 16. And we're going to also show a video that you've created of the contrast-enhanced abdominal CT uh, in this particular 31-year-old patient that is highlighted in the paper. Sure. Um, th this is a case of a, of a young gentleman who came in with abdominal pain. Um, I should say this case was shared with me by uh, radiologist Joe Simeone, um, who's an abdominal radiologist at Mass General. Uh, when I was a fellow, he was kind enough to let me use this case for the paper. Um, so this patient uh, came in and initially had um, a little, very small aneurysm of the uh, SMA. And as you see here, this is a short-term follow-up scan because they weren't quite sure, I guess, what to do with it. And uh, it grew considerably. So as you watch the video, you can sort of track the vessels and branches of the SMA, and you can see this massive aneurysm just appear and then disappear as you get into the more distal branches. Um, so these, these can really affect here. We've seen CNS, pulmonary artery, SMA. Um, so they can really pop up in lots of places. So it's a good thing to have in mind when you have a, a patient with IV drug abuse. Great. Well, thank you for that. So, Dr. David Bates, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time today to discuss your paper, uh, which deals with the opioid epidemic and the role of the emergency radiologist. Uh, and your paper can be found in the current January 2018 issue of Radiographics. David, thanks very much for your time today. Thank you so much.